So I've done a few tutorials on the bone tools in Anime Studio, but I realized a few days ago I never did a tutorial on the bone dynamics that allow you to basically apply physics to the bones. So here I'll show you a few different ways we can approach this and show you how to do it. So first I just have a blank document open and I'm just going to draw something out here really quick so that we can um, play with something here. So I'm just gonna grab a color here and I'll draw something out. Pretty simple here. I'm not even really sure what this is. I guess it's a blob formation of sorts. So maybe kinda looks like one of those green things from the Zelda games. But anyway, once I have something drawn, I will just create a bone layer because we need, of course, in order to apply bone dynamics, we need to have bones and thus a bone layer. So I will create the bone layer and I can just name this bone and I can put my blob into the bone layer. So now like before, you would create your bones. So I can take the add bone tool and just draw some bones going up like so. And in this case, I'm going to do region binding. So I'll make sure that my bone strength for all these bones here, here let me uh, highlight that and come in here and increase the size of my bones here. Make sure that everything is basically encompassing what it should be. So in this case, we'll just go like that. So <clears throat> now we can apply some bone dynamics to this. And it's actually very simple to do. I want to apply the dynamics to all the bones in this case. So I can just take that select bone tool once again and just hold and control and hit A to highlight all the bones. And under the bone constraints drop down menu, you should find bone dynamics. So I'll click to enable that. And that's all I'll do for right now. So I can just close that. And I will take the transform layer tool and just move my blob over here to the left. And then I will go on to the timeline here and extend out to frame 24 and then move the blob over like so. So now if I go back here to frame one and I page forward, you can see we have some stuff going on here. And if I, if I just uh, play it here, you can see that as we move it, it's as if it's being tugged on by gravity. Because of the bone dynamics, the top part goes to the left while we go to the right. And then when it sits, it starts to bob up and down, up and down until it will eventually stop. So that is basically what bone dynamics can do for us. Now, depending on what you're doing, you can come back in here to your bone constraints. Make sure you first select the select bone tool to get to those. So I still have all my bones highlighted. I can click on bone constraints and here you can adjust a few different things that will affect how this works. So in this case for damping, if I adjust this to let's say eight and close it and then I play this, you can see that the bobbing up and down motion stops very quickly. And so that's one thing you can adjust if you wish. You can adjust the spring force. So in this case, if I put this, let's say to eight, close it, and we try this, you can see that the springiness isn't as obvious or strong. And the torque has a similar effect as well. So if I put this back to two, let's say I put this to eight, and I hit play, you can see that it basically adjusts how um, far, I guess, your object will be impacted. I mean, before we had, before when we had that at two, it just went to the left a little bit. Now it's really going to the left. And so again, you can adjust those options to have different effects come into play. Now, there's a couple of other things we can do here. Well, one thing I'll show you here with this blob formation is you can also do this with layer binding. Right now I'm doing it with region binding. But if I take the bone tool, and just come down here and delete all those bones, or those first two bones, I should say, and then I'll just extend this upward a bit. And then I come down here to the blob layer, 
and then I select the bind layer tool and click to bind to that bone. And if I just clicked to look to make sure, yep, we still have the bone dynamics on. So if I once again just move this, oops, I wanted to make sure I do that for the bone layer, not the vector layer, my mistake. So if I uh, move the bone layer, I was wondering why my bone wasn't going with <laughs> when I do that, and then we play this out. You can see it also has the effect um, come to play, and that will also depend on where you position your bones and what you bind and so on, but you can do it both ways. So finally, my last point, if you're wondering why would you ever use this? Well, let's look at a more practical example instead of using a blob. So I'll bring in one of my characters here that I've made before. And <clears throat> continuing on here, I will just click on the head bone and then I will first go back to frame zero and then select the add bone tool. And I'm just going to add some bones here for the hair. Now in this case I'm adding three bones for the three strands. You of course don't have to do that. You could just add one bone if you wish. And I'll add one for up here as well. And I want to make sure that my hair is also not bound to any layers here. It could be but in this case I just don't want it to. So I'll make sure I click off so that's not bound to any that's not bound to the head bone as I originally had it. So we can do region binding now for the hair. And coming back here to my bones, I will just adjust my clouds here or my bone strengths so that they work right like that. And then for these three bones, I can just select them, go into my bone dynamics and turn that on. And now I will just go to frame 24 and move the head down like that. Come back up here, we can play this. And you can see it's kind of hard to tell, but if we move it, you can see that it barely moves. And you know, in this case, I probably wouldn't want it to move all that much because, I mean, unless if his hair is blowing in the wind or something, you know, you're gonna probably want it to look pretty subtle. And so for me, this effect would work pretty well for the hair. So you can play around with those options though by going into your bone constraints and adjusting the torque, the damping, and the spring, and all of that. But that's a more practical example of how you would use bone dynamics. So anyway, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you would like to view more free tutorials, you can visit my website, IncredibleTutorials.com. I also have more extensive premium courses at IncrediblePhiles.com. And finally, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one tutoring or free public seminars, you can visit IncredibleTutoring.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.